It's a joy to welcome you again to celebrate this Mass on the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity. It's the week after Pentecost, but the Church is now wanting us to, as it were, piece the whole thing together, the whole jigsaw. You know, I'm always talking about getting the picture clear and getting all the pieces in. And in a sense, the Church is reminding us of just what we've been celebrating. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we're going to begin by invoking the Holy Spirit in a moment with that wonderful hymn, Walk in the Light, The Spirit Lives to Set Us Free. So if you need to look that up, do so. But I want to make a special word of welcome today to the 35 children who would have been making their First Communion this weekend with a Mass on Saturday and a Mass on Sunday at St Mary's Walton. You and your families, we're celebrating this Mass in a very special way with you Looking forward to the day when we can actually give you communion, but knowing that our Lord is very close to you and that he wants you to be filled with hope and peace and joy because this is your first communion year. Just as we've celebrated with the children from Bishop Eaton uh, two or three weeks ago and two weeks ago with the other group from St Mary's. So just to remind you, um, I'd like to make sure that uh, we do give Freddie Freckles a mention early on. and. Um, I hope you've been with us all the time, but if, if you haven't, just to remind you that Freddie um, really began to understand what it means when we talk about the Holy Spirit. Um, when his dad kind of was encouraging them, I hope you remember last week, um, and he, he kind of called them out and, and said, it, it's time um, that we lifted our spirits. And Freddie kind of thought about that, he was talking to his mum, and he, he realised what his dad meant, that he, he wanted them to feel better inside, because sometimes with this lockdown, it, it all gets a bit tiring, we can get a bit grumpy, and so on. So Freddie began to understand that. Um, and he also understood uh, one of the things that Father Tim is always trying to spell out when we're getting ready for First Communion, but I haven't had time to do this with you this year, I would have done it just a few days before you, First Communion Day, but to, to have a, a little session where we think about how Jesus invites the apostles to come and dine with him, to celebrate the great feast of Passover with him. And uh, we, we do that, we try to imagine ourselves at the Last Supper. And this week, I want you to say I've remembered, <laughs> thank heavens, so we put our wonderful carving of the Last Supper here in front of the altar just to remind us of that image of Jesus dining with the apostles. Now, in a moment, we're going to begin our Mass. Uh, and remember, Jesus uh, doesn't force anything on us. The Holy Spirit doesn't force the Spirit of God on us so that Jesus can live inside us and Jesus unites us with the Father. That's what it's all about. Um, we have to respond to the invitation. And in one of the parables that Jesus told once, he talked about the people who um, refused the invitation. He was really talking about how his own Father invites people to dine with his son Jesus so that one day we can all be united with him in heaven. And some of the people just made excuses and didn't want to go. So we're here because we want to say, yes, thank you, Lord, for the invitation. We want to dine with you. We want your spirit to live in us. We want to be united with you. So let's begin our Mass today by singing. We're going to sing the first four verses of the hymn, Walk in the Light, um, and then we'll move in and we'll ask our Lord to forgive us the things that maybe we've done wrong, and particularly maybe the times that we have refused God's invitation in our lives. Maybe I'll to think of times when we've said no, when we should have said yes. So here we go. The Spirit lives to set us free. Walk, walk in the light. He binds us all in unity. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light of the Lord. Jesus promised life to all, walk, walk in the light, the dead were wakened by his call, walk, walk in the light, Walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light of the Lord. <clears throat> he died in pain on Calvary, walk, walk in the light, to save the lost like you and me, walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light. 
sight of the Lord. We know his death was not the end. Walk, walk in the light. He gave his spirit to be our friend. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So there we are, we've greeted one another in the Lord, we've sung our opening hymn. Um, and remember children, I'm always saying, an easy way to think about this is imagine being invited to a party, your best friend, birthday, whatever, um, and you'd had a big quarrel and you hadn't really made it up. Well, it would be a hopeless party if everybody came along and they were all grumpy and they'd been fighting one another. So we begin our Masses always just by making sure nothing can spoil our celebration. So let's ask our Lord forgiveness for the times that we haven't responded to his invitation to be kind to one another, to look after his world, to come and dine with him. Shall we do a bit more singing? Just sing the Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So, children, we're going to sing the clapping Gloria. I think we all know that and enjoy singing it. So, here we go. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Lord God, heavenly King, peace you bring to us. We worship you, we give you thanks, we sing our song of praise. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Jesus, Saviour of all, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away our sins, O Lord, have mercy on us all. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. At the Father's right hand, Lord, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, and you alone are Lord. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Glory, Father and Son, glory, Holy Spirit, to you we raise our hands up high, we glorify your name. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. In excelsis Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. first reading is taken from the book of Exodus. With the two tablets of stone in his hands, Moses went up the mountain of Sinai in the early morning, as the Lord had commanded him. And the Lord descended in the form of a cloud, and Moses stood there with him. He called on the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness and faithfulness. And Moses bowed down to the ground at once and worshipped. If I have indeed won your favour, Lord, he said, let my Lord come with us, I beg. True, they are a headstrong people, but forgive us our faults and our sins, and adopt us as your heritage. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, to you glory and praise forevermore. To you glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed, Lord God of our fathers. To you glory and praise forevermore. Blessed your glorious holy name. To you glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed in the temple of your glory. To you glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed on the throne of your kingdom. To you glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed who gaze into the depths. To you glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed in the firmament of heaven. To you glory and praise for evermore. The second reading is taken from St Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Brothers, we wish you happiness. Try to grow perfect. Help one another. Be united. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with the holy kiss. All the saints send you greetings. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already, because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so here's time, just a, a few thoughts. I hope, first of all, um, that you've noticed that I've got the Paschal candle changed again this week. Now, strictly speaking, because we wouldn't have the Paschal candle lit after Pentecost, except on 
occasions like baptisms and so on, or confirmations. But because it's First Communion Day, I thought, golly, we must have St. Mary's Paschal Candle back here uh, in our little oratory. And after today's Mass, I'm going to transfer it back to St. Mary's Church, waiting for the day when our churches will open uh, and we can celebrate with you. And uh, hopefully that day is not so far away, but we just don't know. This jolly old virus is taking a bit of, of getting rid of. But in the meantime, uh, I just want to particularly, again, welcome the children who would have been making their First Communion this weekend. And just see if I can help you put those last bits of the jigsaw together. Um, because during these last few weeks, we've been thinking about everything that happened to Jesus at the end of his life. How he loved us so much that even he was willing to give his life for us. He wouldn't give up on loving us. I've often said that. He literally loved us to death. And it was a, a little boy in Much Wilton School who famously asked me, as you know, why do we call it Good Friday when it was such a bad Friday? And my answer was, and it remains and will always be, we can only call it Good Friday because of Easter Sunday. So we thought about Jesus after his death rising to this new life, which is what we hope and pray. All those people who died recently, for whatever reason, so many people in our country and across the world have died of this awful virus, but Jesus has promised that he's gone to prepare a place for us and that in his Father's house there are many rooms. So we pray that one day, um, when we grow older, it'll be a long time for you children now, please God, you'll have good long lives and, and fruitful lives, serving and loving God. Um, but as we grow older, we realise that the time will eventually come when we will leave this earth. And we pray that we'll all be invited then to Jesus' great party uh, in heaven however that's going to be, and we look forward to finding out what all that means. But in the meantime, Jesus has tried to show us. The Old Testament people, we heard about Moses today, communicating with God, had a real sense of God through recognising God in the creation around him. And then God came and made it clear to Moses what he wanted Moses to do to help the people to love God. But they had no idea about the fact that God was going to become one of us. It was with the coming of Jesus that this happened. And we're told in that beautiful story leading up to Christmas that what happened was that the Spirit of God, which we're told in those Old Testament times, at the very beginning of things, God breathed life into the world. And especially, of course, breathed life into the first human beings. And so we are breathing the life of God because we have been created in the image of God, as children of God. That's what the scriptures tell us. But Jesus came to show us really what this meant. And we're told the Holy Spirit overshadowed his mother Mary and she conceived Jesus in her womb. So this was a very special moment in the history of the world. And Jesus was born into our world and he grew up just like any little boy. He had to learn to do all the things that we've had to do, boys and girls, learn to speak and to walk and to cope with life. And then when Jesus had reached a certain age, he realised that he'd come from his father to do this special job of teaching us to be loving people, to stop all the fighting and all the misuse of the beauty and good things of our world. But people didn't understand him, of course, and they saw him, some people saw him as a threat to trying to take over their power and it still goes on in the world today, sadly. But Jesus' message stays true for us all because he told us before he left us that the Spirit would come again. The Spirit's already with us. It's already with you children. You were baptised, so the Spirit of God lives in you. Uh, but at Holy Communion, because Jesus has given us this special gift, we believe that what happens then is that Jesus comes on the altar here, Bread and wine, just bread and wine at the moment at the side there. But just as the Holy Spirit came down upon Mary and she conceived Jesus, so in a few minutes' time I'm going to lay my hands on the bread and wine and pray that the Spirit of God will come down in this little chapel so that Jesus can be truly there as our food. And it really is Jesus. Do this in memory of me. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. This is the bread of life. This is really me, Jesus is saying. So that's what we're going to do. And it all happens because God's Spirit is overshadowing us and making this possible. And when you grow up a little bit older, um, you'll be confirmed. And what will happen at your confirmation day, uh, it'll probably be the bishop 
when we were doing it a few years ago, the bishop delegated it to Father Tin and the parish priest. And I used to confirm the children at the same time as they made their first communion. But we lay our hands on again. The prayer is the Holy Spirit will come on you and fill you with those great gifts of his, gifts of wisdom and understanding and knowledge and so on, so that, and we thought about those last week, so that you can live close to Jesus and live the way Jesus wants you to live. Um, so do you, do you see the idea that, the, I, I mentioned little notes I put in the bulletin this week, that St. Patrick is famous, the, the great saint of Ireland, um, for teachings about the shamrock, you know, the little kind of uh, plant with three leaves, uh, and he used it to show the Irish people that God was three in one. Now, the only trouble is if we stay with that image of God, we think of God as a mathematical problem. But God wasn't a mathematical problem. Uh, God was revealing through Jesus and through the power of the Spirit how he reaches into our lives and unites us with him. So I hope we've made that clear today, that God breathes life into the world, the Spirit of God, that Jesus was born into our world to show us that we are brothers and sisters of his and children of his father. And so just as in your family, you've got mum and dad and children and so on, three, four, five, maybe six people, all part of the one family. So we think of the family of God, Father, Son and Spirit. And today is the feast of the Holy Trinity. So we're thanking God for showing us this, for revealing this to us and for helping us to understand how it all happened. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense for you. And remember, even though you can't actually receive Holy Communion today physically, we're going to make our spiritual communion. And then I hope afterwards, especially the children, but everybody can do this if you want. Uh, the notes are there uh, uh, on the websites about the little service that you can have at home. And I hope you will do that. Whatever time it is, if it's 11s is, or if it's the main meal, or if it's tea time, that you make something of it. And you, as it were, make a place for Jesus and invite Jesus, just as Jesus, we believe, is inviting us to share with him in the Holy Mass and the Eucharist. So you invite Jesus into your home and have a little celebration, um, maybe with some cakes and, um, and some food, uh, maybe even with a drop of wine, I don't know, maybe at a special occasion. But whatever you decide to have, or orange juice, tea, coffee, but you celebrate and you're conscious that Jesus wants to make his home with you, and he's there with you, really there with you, just as he will be in this most wonderful way when you make your first communion, hopefully in a few weeks' time. So let's just pause for a moment and thank God for all that. And before we make the bidding prayers, I'm just going to mention the children. Um, and I want to say a huge thank you to you and your families for preparing so well this year. And also to our wonderful catechetical team. Um, I really am so grateful to Mary Monkhouse and to her team. And you're broken up into little groups, so I'm going to read the names and in which group you're in. So we begin with Carl and Danny's group. And we've got Isabella, Charlie William, Penny, Harriet Page, and Cruz. And then in Zoe's group, we've got Haven, Imogen, and John. In Jen's group, we've got Riley, Chloe, Aisha, Megan Mary, Jacob Daniel, and Charlotte Grace. And then in Mary's group, we've got Holly Louise, Lydia, Sonny, Erin Olivia, Esme, and James. James. Right, and then in Brad's group, we've got another Megan, we've got Holly, Noel, Bo, Rosa, Matthew, and Erin Olivia. And then in Joe's group, we've got Alistair, uh, Ethan Michael and Johnny. And in Jill's group, we've got Ava Scarlett, Heidi, Elsie, Oliver and Phoebe. And there's a note here too because uh, Mary said, don't forget to thank uh, Yvonne, Alex and Anita for helping with our groups this year. So thanks to all of you for working so hard during the year to prepare for your first Holy Communion. So we're going to pray for you especially now. Just let's pause and ask God's blessing on all those families and all our catechetical team and to strengthen you with all his gifts and to fill your homes with his peace today and pray that you will celebrate well looking forward to your first communion day. Lord, in your goodness, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
Before we offer the other other bidding prayers, we're going to make our act of faith, as we usually do, with the Apostles' Creed. So, some of you might like to stand for the Apostles' Creed. And we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. So now we'll bring our other prayers to God our Father before we take the bread and wine and prepare them for the Mass. So I'd like to join our prayer, first of all, with the prayer all over the world. People celebrating the Eucharist, most of them these days, uh, in this sort of way, not actually able to get to church. Some churches are opening in different parts of the world, but even then it's limited, it seems, in the number of people who can go. So let's pray that we may all have that sense of being united, in communion with one another, through the Holy Spirit. Lord, bless Pope Francis, bless our Archbishop Malcolm, unite us all in your love. Lord, in your goodness, hear our prayer. I'd like to remember those people who have a special claim on our prayers. Again, I have a number of intentions here, which I just jotted down to remind me. Um, First of all, uh, I'd like to remember those people who perhaps have nobody to pray for them, and perhaps are lonely and struggling at this time. And I want to pray too for the, the army of people who are trying to help them and support them, especially in our two parishes. And uh, a number of people I know are sick. I'd like you to remember Susan Rooney, who's a friend of the chair of our parish team, Anne Connor. She's got an, um, a bit an important and, and a difficult operation at Guy's Hospital in London this coming week. I'd like you to remember Jo Pollard, one of our great faithful parishioners. She's had a fall recently and I think is struggling a little bit. One or two people we've already prayed for, but please keep Kelsey Melia, who's having this cancer treatment in London, in your prayers. And Patricia Ord, who is dying of cancer at the moment, and all those we've prayed for before. I think we should pray too this weekend, please, for um, Kate and Jerry McCann and uh, Madeline's grandma Sue, this very painful news that's coming through. Uh, it's difficult to cope with, we understand that. We're united with you in prayer. We pray the Lord will continue to comfort you. And let's remember the Lord can redeem all the pain and suffering of our world. And we hope one day to see what that saving presence of God means, even in all the bad things that happen. So we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And some kind of happier news. Uh, I think all our schools uh, have reopened, and not, not that many children perhaps going to them, but I know at Bishop Eden and at St Mary's, I think St Julie's and SFX, there are children back at school. Um, I know, for example, the children from our Syrian family, Ola and Adil, are, are back at school, so we're really pleased about that, and we ask God to bless Gofan and Ishmael, their parents, and thank God for their presence in the life of our two parishes too. And for all those people now who um, have asked our prayers individually, uh, we entrust you to the Lord today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we mustn't forget those uh, who've died. We've got a funeral this week, um, interestingly just the one this week, uh, through St Mary's Parish, and that's for John James Hurst, so we pray for the repose of his soul. We remember, again, recently deceased, Sister Kathleen Hamilton, and Domingo Deus, who is the father-in-law of Kath, who sings in our choir at St Mary's. And then there are anniversaries I'd like to, you to remember. Teresa Silva, it's the second, her second anniversary. She's the mum of Donna Allenson. Um, and Jack Gray, it's the fourth anniversary 
uh, Jack Gray, and we ask God to bless his daughters, Olivia, Jane and Alison. So there we are. I think we've remembered everybody. Let's pray. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they May rest, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant that what we have asked in faith we may indeed obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I put the special cloth on the altar now. And this is called the corporal. Those of you who are good at Latin know that that speaks to us of the body, so we think of the body of Christ, which is going to be here very soon, when I've said these prayers of preparation. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And take the wine... And then a little drop of water, which reminds us that we're all called to mingle, as it were, with God, to be united with God. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this offering of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. So once again we'll use the second Eucharistic prayer. But children be ready to sing the clapping Gloria in between times as a little refrain, both at the acclamation and through the Eucharistic prayer. It just helps us, I think, to concentrate. So remember what I'm going to do. Pray the Holy Spirit will come so that Jesus will be really here with us in Holy Communion. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Jesus is truly with us now in Holy Communion, and we make our mystery of faith. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit and rejoice as we sing. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face where one day we will all sing together. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. So now we're ready to say the prayers immediately before Holy Communion, so let's pray the best way we know the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And greet each other now, lovingly in your homes, and pray the Lord may bless and unite you in his love. And so we pray, the Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Before I receive communion and give communion to Brother James, we'll offer our spiritual communion with all of you who cannot actually receive our Lord at the moment in this way. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in Holy Communion. I love you and would love to receive you now, but since this is not possible, please come to me and fill me with all the blessings and graces I need to cope with everything that is going on. Unite us all and give us the peace which you promised only you can give. Amen. No, I love to just sing that simple hymn, Jesus, I love you, you are my Lord. So let's just sing that and then, Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. You are my Lord. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. You are my Lord. One thing I didn't do at the time of the bidding prayers was ask Our Lady to pray with us with this special prayer to Our Lady of Pope Francis. So I'm going to share that prayer with you again now. You, salvation of your people, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide, so that as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Dear Heavenly Mother, help us to live these difficult days filled with hope, with renewed unity, with a true spirit of obedience to what is required of us, with the certainty that after this trial we may arrive at the blessed and glorious hour of the Resurrection. Amen. So let us pray the final prayer of the Mass. May receiving the sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul, as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. I think the only notice this week is just to wish you all well. I hope those of you who are going to school that it's, it's going well. Um, I just remind you that next Sunday we have yet another feast, although we're back in ordinary time during the weekdays now. Um, next Sunday is the Feast of Corpus Christi. It always used to be on a Thursday to remind us of the, the Last Supper, of course, uh, and a morning Thursday, but uh, the bishops have put it onto the Sunday nearest, so we'll be celebrating that next week. And I thought, what a lovely thought, that right at the end of our First Communions, now perhaps all the First Communion children um, can, as it were, come together next Sunday to celebrate the actual Feast of Holy Communion. Uh, we call it Corpus Christi. Now I was talking about corporals. Well, the word corpus means body in Latin, so we call it the body of Christ, Corpus Christi. So that's next Sunday's feast. Um, and I think um, I'll go into another set of vestments, which are special for the, the, uh, for the Mass and for Corpus Christi. And we'll put the special diocesan vestments away for the time being after having all these big feasts. 
uh, but these are the special ones that Archbishop Malcolm had made, which I like to use on these big occasions. So there we are. Thank you for being with us today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. And if you can manage it, we'll sing two more verses. The last two verses of Walk in the Light. So uh, if you've got anything to sort of bang, symbols or anything, clap your hands, then do so, okay? By Jesus' love our wounds are healed. Walk, walk in the light. The Father's kindness is revealed. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. The Spirit lives in you and me. Walk, walk in the light. His light will shine for all to see. Walk, walk in the light. Walk.